Hey folks, Reagan with TDA again. I'm gonna do some data collection on some ammunition that I've come across a few times, so I like to pick it up. Uh, this I got from Superior Outfitters in Longview. I uh, found it a couple other places, decided to pick it up there here recently, one of my local shops. Support your local Second Amendment shop, it's a good idea. So, uh, this is 308 150 grain gold dot personal protection. So, um, there's all kinds of stuff out there. You can typically find ballistic gelatin tests on the manufacturer's website and stuff. That and ballistic gel blocks are pretty expensive. So there's a few other things that I actually want to look into when I'm selecting a personal protection round, and that is velocity and what the velocity does when you introduce cold weather. So not necessarily cold weather data, but cold data. And so uh, I live here in Texas, and so we have apocalyptic weather. So at some point, it will be 918 degrees today, uh, but tomorrow morning there will be frost on the ground because Texas, that's why. So uh, what I like to do, and it's not a perfect test or anything like that, I'm simply introducing a variable to see how the ammunition reacts, or better yet, how the the powder reacts really is what I'm looking for. Cold powder test really way to look at it. So I put uh, about 10 rounds in a magazine inside of my freezer, let it sit for a certain amount of time, test to see what the temperature is, and then go shoot it through my chronograph. I use a Labrador and then I see exactly what happens to it. So uh, compared to like a fair weather test, which believe it or not, I can see the clouds back here, but it's, it's actually like, this is normal. It's hot, it's sweating. It's only like nine in the morning, so that's Texas. All right, guys, uh, checking the temperature outside today on my little uh, Kestrel D3, or whatever it's called, uh, Kestrel Drip 3, whatever. Uh, it's telling me through the app on my phone that we're at 81.8 degrees right now with a uh, relative humidity of 71.7. So uh, take that into consideration whenever we're uh, collecting this data. Those uh, parameters are in there. All right, just pulled some of the Spear Gold Dot 150 grain personal protection out of the cooler. It was wrapped in a bag, so there's no water problems or anything like that. Getting in there, there is a little condensation. So let's see what the temperature of the rounds are. There we go, 59 degrees, 57, 57. All right, so on both of these top rounds, we're looking at about 57 degrees. And these have been sitting in the cooler for, or not in the cooler, in a freezer for uh, two and a half hours about, and then kept in a cooler on the way here just to make sure the temperature got all the way down, all the way down to the inside of the powder. So it's sat there and saturated inside of the metal magazine so that it's a good conductor, all that sort of jazz. So let's gather some cold weather data, or some, sorry, cold powder data. So let's check these. These have just been riding in the truck with me, sitting outside for the last 10, 15 minutes. So I am showing 79 and 80 degrees for these top two rounds. Let's hit them again. 79.9, 79.9, 80. All right, so these are within a tenth of a degree. So. All right, guys, so let's let the radar tell what's going on here. So this is our fair weather or normal weather in Texas. But all right, so 81.8 degrees, 71.7 uh, .7, uh, relative humidity. Let's go down and see what we got here. I actually have a standard deviation of 21.8, but then a green spread of 79. So well, what does that tell me? I'm like, well, mil spec uh, standard deviation is plus or minus 20 feet per second. So it's a little bit out of that, uh, which is kind of surprising for spear gold dot classification i guess of ammunition so let's go down and look at the cold powder spread cold powder spread with series 114 right here our extreme spread was only 50 and we got 15.3 in our standard deviation that's pretty crazy average velocity was 2607 feet per second now let's go back up to 115 our average velocity on our fair weather was 2654 so 2654 2607 so we lost i'm not gonna do math almost 50 <laughs> uh, feet per second with the cold powder and this is over the course of 10 rounds so 
Uh, obviously, we do hundreds of rounds. Those numbers are going to vary just a little bit. 10 rounds, pretty good check. So let's see what it did downrange because I can see through my optic here that I... Uh, all right, so we're down range. We're right at 102 yards. That's what this range is uh, set up for specifically. So I wasn't going to do like a hardcore accuracy test or anything like that out of it. Uh, 150 grams is looking pretty serious. Uh, I got a 16-inch uh, barrel uh, on that Maroon Stealth that I'm shooting, and I have shot less than a group or less than an inch group before uh, using 168 gold metal match. I uh, know the thing's capable of very serious accuracy. So is it perfectly set up for 150 grain spear gold dot per personal protection? I'm going to say no. Um, doesn't mean it's not going to work perfectly in an M14 or you know a bolt gun or anything like that. This is a specific gas gun. So these are my five rounds of 175s because that's all I have with me. I was warming the barrel up so it wasn't just dead cold so I didn't have to wait for three hours for the barrel to get all the way cool again. I did let the barrel cool down to um, 80 degrees or I'm sorry 81-ish degrees right at uh, the muzzle device on the barrel checked it with a temp gun to make sure I wasn't like shooting with a higher temperature than I started with on the other one so you can ignore these and this you know it, that gun definitely does not like 175s um, OBR shoots sub MOA groups all day long with 175s this one really likes 168s just it being uh, I guess a 16 inch uh, with that twist rate so my cold weather is right here I was aiming at this particular bullseye and you can see my dispersion right here of everything uh, my shooting was pretty consistent. Uh, if there's any marksmanship error, it should be very, very small uh, to where, you know, again, I, with that bag, that gun, the exact same setup. I've shot sub-MOA groups or right at about one MOA with that gun, but uh, obviously not going to be the case with this. Uh, didn't even feel like I needed to bring my ruler out here. This is close to three inches across from outside to outside. Uh, maybe uh, some of you guys can measure it a little easier than I can. So uh, we also got my fair weather right here. You'll notice I got one guy way up here. It's because I started to use this bullseye and then I noticed this was my impact was way up here. I'm not re-zeroing the gun to collect data on ammunition unless I'm like, hey, I like that ammunition. And I'm going to base me entire around that high-end ammunition. So once this guy went up here, I'm like, mm, no, nah, I don't want anything to be off of it. I certainly don't want to go buy another box just to finish the video or anything like that so I brought it down here uh, this does appear to be about a half inch tighter uh, with the uh, fair weather ammunition or the fair weather temperature stuff so, uh, nothing definitive or anything like that do so not buy this ammunition this is just information for you should you decide to venture into using that stuff uh, this is what I've got out of my LaRue uh, I'm going to test it out of my M14 see uh, how that goes if it's up to par for it then i'll use it for it if it's not then i'm probably going to find something else uh it's one thing i do like about 308 a lot of things out there so i always want to keep uh, working on exactly what i want to use in the event i need to use that weapon system for any particular thing so i uh, hope this helps you guys out so 